check this out. I put my Arctic Air Pure Chill 2.0 on top of my Arctic Air Pure Chill XL to create the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL 2.0 Jeff Reviews for You edition. Here is our Arctic Air Pure Chill XL. And of course, I have it sitting next to our Arctic Air Pure Chill 2.0 that we reviewed not that long ago. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick unboxing, but let's look at some of the things that are on here, specifically the oscillating feature, and it has a replaceable cooling cartridge. I'm interested to see what that is. Before I actually unbox the XL, I should say that the 2.0 cost me $40 and the XL I purchased for $80. So is this thing really twice as good? Let's finally do the unboxing. After I unboxed it, I could tell I was already way too excited and I've been let down. That replaceable cooling cartridge is nothing else than this simple filter, just like all the other ones. I thought this was going to be some sort of an ice pack inside, but your cooling cartridge is just that filter. Looking from the top, you can see there's a huge difference. The Arctic Air Pure Chill XL is rounded on the back and not the typical square. We can see that the buttons on the top are very similar. We have our fan speed, our boost our light control. We also have a timer on this one. This is cool. We have two hours, six hours, eight hours, or 12 hours. And then of course this one oscillates. That's pretty cool. We are going to test all those out. I just wanted to show you the buttons on top. This is the area where you're supposed to pour your water in from, although you can access the reservoir down here as well. And maybe I guess the reason they have this is so you can add your ice cubes. I do like that they have a drain right here on the side if you need to drain it out. You notice here they also have a max fill line, so make sure you don't fill it above that line. Looking at the back, we can see that this plug is attached, so you cannot lose it because, well, you absolutely can't remove it. On one hand, I like that. On the other hand, it limits the portability because some things may not be able to operate off a typical plug. Before we get our water and ice and start this thing up, I wanted to go over the features, so I'm going to turn it on first. And to turn it on, I simply hit the fan button. And of course you can see that that lights up down below as well. I've been testing the oscillating feature just for a little while and I'm actually really impressed with the range that you get. It's a pretty wide angle. I will say from time to time, I hear almost what sounds like a cricket noise or a high pitch chirp. And what my guess is it's the fan on the inside. We're gonna open this up and look, but I should note that I've been hearing a strange noise every so often. Welcome back to another Jeff Reviews for you. As you saw, we are looking at yet another Arctic Air product, and boy, do they have a lot of them. This one's supposed to be bigger and better than the last. So without further ado, let's get right back into the review. We're gonna start filling this up with water. What I have is I have two cups of cold water, actually just water from the tap. I'm gonna see how much water it takes. I will say as I'm pouring this in, it seems to flow in slower than the Arctic Air 2.0. Why don't you see as I'm pouring this, it is very easy to overspill because it does not take the water in very fast. So you have to pour really slow. I think in the future, I'm actually gonna be using the lower reservoir just to pour it in. So be careful here on the top. We filled up the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL. It took 20 ounces of water. I will say if you wanted to add ice, you're gonna to have to do less water because this 20 ounces put us at our max fill level. I do have the filter that has been soaked just off to the side, but I wanna see this thing in operation. So I'm gonna turn it on. Well, that's weird, it's not turning on. I wonder why. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it has a sensor, it does. Right up here, you can't turn it on without having the sensor plugged. Let me get something to hold that in place. Now you're not supposed to run this with the door off and the filter out. I just want to see what's inside. So when you're using it, you will absolutely keep all those things on. I actually used the twist tie that was used to tie up the plug to push the sensor. Let's turn it on. First things we see, well, that's cool. We can see the mist starting up and coming off. I did notice that on this particular version, the XL, you cannot turn the mist off unless I guess it runs out. But you notice in the back, that's actually a turbine versus a fan. And so I like the way that those produce, I, in my opinion, a greater airflow. With this open, I'm gonna take the time to go over the colors that you see down below. Now in the directions, they only list blue, red, white, teal, purple, and green. Well, that's not enough colors. There's actually one extra one. I think it's the yellow green, but let's cycle through. We start out with this light blue. We have our red, then a regular just white light. This is where the a blue, they considered it teal, but in my opinion, it looks more blue. 
and then a purple, a yellowish green, and then a regular green. The last one right here brings us back to that light blue color. And what this is going to do now is going to take the time to oscillate through the different colors that are here on the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL. Of course, if I hit it one more time, oops, I had the wrong button. One more time, we shut off the light altogether. Right now I have it in turbo mode because I wanted you to be able to see the mist that's actually spraying out of the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL. All three of those currently are spraying out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn the speed down. This is medium and all three are still spraying out and of course we'll drop down to low and it looks as though all three are still spraying out on low. So all four speeds, these misters are all working. Now we are gonna take time to reassemble this. Make sure that you always run it with the filter and the faceplate on for safety purposes. I turned off the air conditioning in this room about two hours ago and I wanted the room to just warm up and stabilize temperature as in having no climate control whatsoever. So you can see that my humidity is right now at 56%, which is high. Also the room temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna operate the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL and just see if it can cool down the room because that's what it says. Cool your space quick and easy. We have no ice, we just have the cold water. Let's turn this on, we'll check back in in 30 minutes. I should say we have this on oscillate. It should not spray directly in front of that thermometer that's right there. I threw a quick thermometer on the XL itself. Let's wait till it oscillates back. We can see that it's bringing out between 68, 69, or even 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I do have the probe part in front of the misting feature. I thought that would be the best case scenario for this device. We'll see what that temperature looks like in a half hour as well. We are at the 30 minute check-in. As you can see, the temperature of the air coming out has gotten lower. It's actually 66 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really, really good. Of course, you can see over here that the humidity in the room has gone up to percent. Now at the one hour mark, you can see the air temperature coming out is just around 68.4 or five degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off. We are gonna soak the filter, wet it. I'm gonna drain out the water and we're gonna try this as cold as it possibly can be. To drain this, you just really pull the drain plug. Let's see, took a little bit more effort. All right, there we go. Of course, when you're done, you can push the plug all the way back in. I will say that even though I tipped it over on its side, it did not drain all of the water that's in there. So tell me, what are your thoughts of the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL? Is this something that you would purchase, especially if it's 80? dollars let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below i would love to hear from you now we're going to try this with the frozen filter some ice and some water this is very frozen you can actually see some of the ice still hanging off of this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try to get some ice into this area and then i'll fill it with water put the filter in and run our tests we just filled this up with the water. I have to break off these ice cubes because it, the uh, filter wouldn't fit. Anyway, I'm really excited to see what temperature we get now. You can see the thermometer right there between 74 and 75. We're gonna turn this on high and throw our boost out. You can see that we're instantly dropped five, six degrees in just a matter of seconds. I'll check back in in a few minutes to let you know how low the temperature got. It's only been three minutes and we've gotten as low as actually 61 degrees Fahrenheit, but I see it wavering between 61 and 62. That is a lot colder than it was before. So we have a similar experience here with the XL that we had with the 2.0 and other Arctic Air products where the ice in the reservoir is just melting. I mean, it's almost gone down there. Difference is in the 2.0, I could pop off the lid here and add more ice, whereas on the XL, I have to stop it, pull off this front cover, and then I can add more ice. So it takes a little more effort to keep the cooling going with the XL than it does with the other Arctic Air products. We are at the 30 minute mark, and you know what? I'm actually pretty impressed. We're still pretty low with the temperature coming out of the Arctic Air XL. At this point, all of the ice is completely melted. The room temperature has stayed the same at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, but our humidity has gone up slightly. Let's check back in at the one hour mark. So not much had changed at the hour check-in, so I didn't film anything. Here we are at an hour and a half. You can see that our humidity in the room is constantly going up. We started at 53% and now we're at 57%. 
However, the temperature in the room is still 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Coming out of the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL itself, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. I am really impressed that it's holding up this long. That being said, look at how much water is actually dribbling out here onto the table. That's something you're going to have to be careful about because some surfaces don't like having water drip down that just ruins them. It's hard to believe that after three hours, this thing is still pushing out air that's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. However, you might have noticed that the temperature in our room has raised two degrees to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, the percentage of humidity has gone up from 53% to 63%. And that's the part that really gets you feeling sticky or warm or not comfortable. It's the high level of humidity. Since we've started to increase our room temperature, I'm gonna stop the test because it really debunks what they said about it's able to cool your space quick and easy because, well, although I kept us cool for a long period of time, the space started to get warmer. Don't get me wrong. This little fan is pretty powerful and adding the mist, it does keep you cool. Three to four feet from this, man, it's really comfortable. Even if the humidity is going up, it still provides a nice breeze. In this video, we were looking at the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL. So what do they think of it? Well, when I first saw this at my local Aston on TV retailer, I saw oh, it's a little bigger than the original Arctic Air Pure Chill and the 2.0. Maybe it's gonna be like 50 or 60 bucks. So I get up, scan it in, $80, I'm thinking that, and that's almost the price of the tower, the Arctic Air Tower. That's a lot of money. This thing better be worth it. I will say, I really appreciate the change from a typical fan to that turbine because you do get a lot more power and there's a lot more wind coming through that fan than the typical 2.0 or the original Pure Chill. I also like that it had a larger reservoir so I could hold more water, which means if you like that mist, it can go longer. Also, if you wanted to add ice, you could add more ice to it. I think the biggest upgrade for this one is that it oscillates. So if you don't want something as big as the tower fan that they make, you can use something that's just, you know, a little bit bigger than the original 2.0 or the Pure Chill, and you have an oscillating fan, which I thought was really, really convenient. A little disappointed that you couldn't get all the water out. The drain plug was just a little too high. In my opinion, that kind of stuff worries me because that's how like mold could happen if you can't get all that water out. Also, why don't they have these reservoirs insulated so the water and ice stays colder longer? Because when this had ice and water, it was really cranking out some cold temperatures, but as the ice melted, the water got warmer. Well, there goes the cold temperatures. They all got warmer too. When you're using products like this, mini swamp coolers, it's important to be realistic and lower your expectations just a little bit. These are not room air conditioners at all. They are personal air coolers. And yes, if you're within three to four feet, they do provide a nice breeze. And if you like that mist or that water, they can provide that refreshing breeze. But that mist can add humidity to your room. In the end, if you like these Arctic Air products, you're gonna like this one as well. But you have to think, is it really worth that $80? It does oscillate. There is a bigger reservoir and the fan is a lot better. Anyway, if this is something that interests you, I will leave a link down in the description. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. As always, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. I do appreciate the design of the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL because these fan blades as they sit are a little more recessed than this lip. So as the water drips down, it goes right back into the reservoir right under there. And I do appreciate that. I have noticed, like I've said before though, some of the table in front of the XL has gotten wet. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of the Arctic Air Pure Chill XL. You know what, it kind of reminded me a little bit of a fan I reviewed recently called the Breeze It, and the reason it reminded me of it because it was a bladeless fan. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link that review right up here, and I would love it if you would click on this link. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm gonna join you at this review. So go ahead, click it, it's safe, I promise.